In this section, we will learn to write, run and manage unit tests in Visual Studio. We will explore how unit tests are usually structured. We will compare different unit testing frameworks and their support in Visual Studio. We will use Test Explorer and other unit testing related Visual Studio features. We will learn how to isolate the tested code from its dependencies. In this video, we will create a unit test and run it in Visual Studio. We will compare different types of tests and learn how to recognize a unit test. We will take a look at a typical structure of a unit test. We will write a unit test and run it inside Visual Studio. Let's start with some testing terminology. There are a lot of different terms to describe tests in software engineering. To make things even more difficult, there is no unanimous agreement on what exactly individual terms mean. I will describe some of the most common terms as I understand them and as I will use them in these videos. All of them will belong under the common umbrella of automated tests. These are code-based tests that can be run repeatedly and don't require a human tester. Unit tests are the most basic ones and have the smallest scope of all the test types. Their name originates from the idea that they are used to test a single unit of code, a function or a class, independently of any other code in the project. They are written by the developer as he is implementing the code under test. Test-driven development, or TDD in short, is often mentioned in relation to unit tests. It's an approach to write unit tests before the code that they are testing so that they can be run repeatedly while writing code. They will fail at first and only pass once the code is correctly implemented. The process affects the code design and is therefore more than just a testing methodology. It is a software development process. The next category of tests are integration tests. Unlike unit tests, they are not limited to single units of code, but rather to multiple units combined testing how they are integrated together. This is where the name comes from. System test is a similar term that is sometimes used interchangeably with integration test. Strictly speaking, system tests can have a narrower scope being limited to a single software system, while integration tests can test even the integration of multiple different systems. Acceptance tests have the widest scope of the three. They are used to test the complete software solution including the front-end, even the user interface. Especially in web development circles, the term end-to-end -end tests, or in short, E2E tests, is often used to describe such tests, pointing out that the test encompasses the complete software stack from the front-end to the back-end. Acceptance tests are often mentioned together with behavior-driven development, or BDD in short, although their use is not limited to it. BDD is a practice in which development starts with user requirements described in a language that can be understood directly by the customer or the stakeholder. These serve as acceptance criteria. Using specialized tools, they can be directly executed as acceptance tests that run the actual application code. When they pass, the requirement has been properly implemented. The last type of tests that I will mention are regression tests. The term does not relate to the scope of the test. A regression test can be of any of the above three types. Their role is to prevent introducing new bugs or reintroducing bugs that were already fixed. As such, they are typically written when a bug is found to reproduce it and to detect it after it has been fixed or before a functionality is being extended to prevent it from breaking existing functionality. We will write our first test to test the Fibonacci functions, which we have already used in some of the previous videos. To create a more typical testing scenario, I have moved the code into a separate class library, Sequences. I have put both Fibonacci functions into the Fibonacci class and renamed them based on their implementation to recursive and iterative. For the test, we will add a new project to our solution. We will select a unit test project template and name it sequences.tests. There is already an empty test method in our newly created project. Let's first rename the class and its file name. 
and also the test method. We also need to reference our class library from the newly created project. Our first test will validate that the iterative Fibonacci function correctly calculates the 20th item in the sequence. The test code is structured into three parts, which is typical for unit tests. The pattern is called arrange act assert based on the purpose of individual test parts. In the arrange part, we prepare all the prerequisites for running the code that we want to test. In our case, we created a new instance of the Fibonacci class which contains the function that we want to test. In the act part, we invoke the code that we want to test. We have called the function under test with the right argument value and stored the result. In the assert part, we check if the code under test behaved as expected. We compare the returned value with the correct value of the 20th Fibonacci number, 6765. Although not all tests will have such a clear separation between the arrange, act and assert parts with comments indicating each part, this is still the most common structure of a unit test, which also makes it easy for everyone to read the test code and understand its purpose. Let's now run the test and see if our function calculates the value correctly. The test has passed. We can see the result in the text explorer window and also in the code editor just above the method name. Using the so-called code lens feature which is only available in Visual Studio Professional and Enterprise Editions. If the test had failed, the test would be marked as failed. At the bottom of the test explorer window there's also a detailed test output making it clear why the test failed. In this video, we have learned about the basics of unit tests and written one ourselves.